Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, I'm using my NPR voice, even though the neighbors are all screaming at each other. Uh, anyway, so this is the, the Mighty Captain Marvel number zero. Now, I'm not exactly sure when or how it was released, because I don't remember this coming out. I just remember Captain Marvel number one, so I don't know if this is like a new comic book day or, or what. But anyway, this uh, this is a big deal, this cover, because this is, as far as I can tell, the first instance of the breast pack. The breast pack is this kind of flat-ish area. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of like just one big blob. There's a slight indentation right here, but it's um it's not human. <laughs> it's not male, it's not female, it's not trans, it's just simply its own thing. So I'm reading right here, it says uh US Air Force Pilot Carol Danvers was caught in the explosion of an alien device. She was imbued with superhuman powers. So, as far as I can tell, the alien device exploded about right here. And the shockwave went down. All the force went right there, and it, and it smashed her, her normal female human breasts into this kind of monstrosity right here. The other side effects were that her jaw was actually strengthened, her hair was blown off, and all her femininity, kind of like a, like a, like a soul or a ghost or a demon leaving a body, was just pushed it. So it exploded, breast pecs were created, hair blown off, jaw, jaw strengthened, femininity blown out the thing. And then he's just amazed because he's like, "Whoa, it's the woman with." You know, I'm saying breast pecs. It's really a breast peck. It's all. If you look, it's all one thing. Um, so anyway, um, this is a, a zero issue, so it's kind of just ca uh, catching you up to speed on what happened. So it starts off right away, and oh my gosh, this is annoying. So, as we've discussed a million times, oh, look at these. Oh my god. Um, in SJW Comics, all women love all other women, literally and figuratively. They're all pseudo-lesbians, uh, they're all friends immediately. Uh, a 15-year-old Muslim <laughs> hangs out with a 35-year-old, and it just, it just women all love each other. Women never argue, women never fight, they just get along all the time. Now, here's the deal, this turns out actually to be a dream sequence, but this also matches a dozen other scenes. Um, so, um, <laughs> just to hit all the cliches, She's a woman who don't need no man. This is also a woman who don't need no man. This is a girl who, when she's a woman, don't need no man. This is a woman who took her identity from a man who don't need no man, who died of cancer, who don't need no man. And this is the Black Widow who just loves the D. So she's the exception to proves it. Um, then we find out that this dream is it's actually a dream within a dream. And then um, uh, Iron Man comes to fight her. And then we find out that the dream within a dream was actually a visit to a psychiatrist's office. The dream within a dream psychiatrist's office was actually a hologram. Uh, so it's one of the biggest wastes of time. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are some points that uh, Carol is dealing with the emotional fallout from Civil War II. The problem is that um, she doesn't ever seem like a person. What she seems is like a fanfic character. Um, this is, uh, I've described this phenomenon as women without friends, imagining what women with friends act like. Um, she seems neither male nor female, neither straight nor gay. She is simply a holder of breast pecs and a owner of, of a breast peck. So then we find out her job, which is kind of like a deep space nine type of thing, uh, guarding the earth. <laughs> it seems like a very poorly thought out plant. So uh, just to let's pretend this circle is the Earth. They're protecting the Earth with a single space station. <laughs> By the way, everything seems to happen right at the space station, as if there was a gate and you had to go. But there's none. It just They protect Earth with a single uh, spaceship and geosynchronous or whatever. Oh, and she's got a cat, because a single woman with a, with a cat is not the biggest uh, cliche in the world. Actually, you know what? For New York, it seems like dogs are more popular. Um, but, uh, man, 
New York City dogs, I'm telling you, they have no chill and they are all about to, if they ever achieve sentience, it's going to be crazy because they are the most neurotic things on the planet. <laughs> they piss everywhere. Um, like they don't piss like on a, like they don't piss like on a fire hydrant. You can eat off a fire hydrant in Manhattan. They piss right in the middle of the sidewalk. So you basically, when you're walking, unless you just want to splash around it, like singing in the rain, you're effectively jumping about half of your walk. Um, so then, uh, she wakes up to take her breast peck for a walk. She meets with the OMG fangirl, who's like, OMG, like, totally a fangirl. And OMG, she writes fan fiction. So then we basically get a thing where they're kind of bringing up speed that Carol's a little PTSD right now. She shot some satellites that got too close to their space station because she thought that she was... Now let's just check, just check out... We need to look at this right here. This is a woman. This is a woman in Marvel Comics right now. Um... Wow, she's, I'm surprised she's not more popular. I mean, she's got the Rachel Maddow crowd and Rachel Maddow. So, I mean, that's, you know, a potential audience of a couple million. And yet she only sell, sells like 16,000. That's kind of weird. Uh, anyway, so this is just the creepiest creeper. Like, look at that. I seem to get a, a disproportionate amount of women. Um, I'm saying that because YouTube says only like 5% of my followers are women. And then uh, they seem to be more active commenters. So uh, women, I'm going to say mainly straight women, but uh, any woman. If a dude looking female like this had this kind of body language with you at work, I might add, what would your reaction be? So then, even though they're kind of talking about PTSD with this sitcom tone, then we find out that she's like the OMG most popular superhero ever, and OMG, her subordinates at work, OMG, like totally, they have heart eyes. They have heart, oh, they have heart eyes. I'm going to zoom in on how painful this is. Sana Amanat needs to be fired. She is, of course, the editor of this. She's also the big proponent of Miss Marvel, she's a far-left ideologue who cannot sell comics to save her life. Comics, for the most part, is action-adventure with a little bit of humor. This is some kind of Archie slash Scott Pilgrim slash Steven Universe kind of trash. Honestly, this reaction right here is fairly appropriate, but this is the mostly male readers reacting to this. Of course, she has, of course, he got black lipstick. And really, it's called the Carol Core. Like, I thought that was like... I'm going to start. So then she's a... OMG, she's got a cat on her head. It's like totally random. Nice job, by the way. Then um, she bumps into someone at work to which she uh, automatically hits them and uh, proves that she's mentally unstable. Then she starts getting into a... Uh, again, a work-inappropriate touchiness to where her subordinates come in and they feel uncomfortable because you should. She is a terrible leader. Um, really nice coloring though. And then <laughs> this is the funny thing. They give her this tiny box, although the box keeps changing dimensions from being fairly square to being rectangular to being rectangular but bigger. Then she starts mentioning all the things in the book. Uh, in the box, but the thing she's mentioning could not possibly fit in this box. She's like, she's like, my dad's bowling ball, a, pe a pennant, a telescope. I'm like, this is like a pretty small box. Where's the bowling ball he just described? So then we cut to um, her origin, which is... Um, men are evil and don't want women to do things. So she liked the stars. Um, her family was a, uh, she was horrified to grow up in a blue collar family that liked sports. Uh, then she talked in this weird way that women always talk in SJW comics where they talk like they're autistic aliens. She, so she says, I should have gotten that strike, Pops. Bowling is just physics and I got an A in physics. Yeah, idiot. It, it, it's called hand-eye coordination. 
you, you don't learn that in a class. So then her dad is like, uh, hey, I can't afford to send both you and your brother to school and pay both of your tuitions. And then he goes, I got you a job in gift wrapping, to which she freaks out at the idea of getting a job. And then um, <laughs> then he talks about uh, one of the sons is going to help him do some blue collar work. And she's just like, that's not fair. What about me? What am I supposed to do? And then he says, uh, again, she's uh, Carol in current continuity is about, I don't know, 35, which would have meant this took place about the year 2000. The idea that a dad in the year 2000 is like, find yourself a man. You don't need no careers. <laughs> like, like what? That would barely be believable in like the 70s. So then she's like, um, uh, she's like, I enlisted in the Air Force the next day. Oh, wait, so she was 18. She was 18 when this happened. Um, and then, uh, okay, get ready for this one. She was the best at everything. Um, she was the best Air Force. She was the best pilot. She was the best astronaut. And then he goes, and then it said, I was a hard worker, and my record showed it. Air Force enlisted, Air Force Command. NASA scrub, NASA command, NASA security brass. This, <laughs> these descriptions are like, this doesn't seem like the author knows anything about the military. She's just saying like random words she heard from like Hogan's heroes. So you're enlisted and then you were a command. Are you trying to say that you were a commander? So you would say you're an officer. Air Force command would be like, like the HQ. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Enlisted, you know, that's like a rank. Command, that sounds like a unit, not... I think she's trying to say officer. NASA, NASA scrub, NASA command... What? NASA security... What? And then she goes, Every ACO said the same thing. I was the top of my class, and the fastest of anyone. The best of the best. For a girl. So, um, wait... You were in the Air Force of like 2000 to like 2010, and then in NASA. By the way, the last space shuttle flight was like six years ago. You were in NASA for like six year, years, and your all your commanding officers were saying blatantly sexist stuff that would have been considered sexist in the 1960s. It's very hard to believe. She goes, but I didn't care. I knew if I could just get up to space, no one could tell me who I couldn't be. Or what I couldn't do. And then they get this like really this off the wall picture where she's like a girly girl falling through space. I don't know. So then it goes to an actual plot which are two, sh uh, two ships approach. Um, Carol's a really bad leader where she just kind of freaks out about everything. You're a space station. Sh ships probably approach you all the time. Just hearing a, a ship is is coming, then they all scramble. By the way, there's only like six people apparently on this whole space station, um, and uh, of course half of them are, are women. And then they're just she, she's just freaking out. It's like there's a spaceship near us. There's a spaceship near us. And then she goes out, and um, she basically catches it. Uh, there's a one thing. Uh, there's an attacker, and then there's one being attacked. So then in a kind of a clumsy thing, there's all of a sudden like a million refugees. So um, uh, she comes in and they're, they're kind of cool. They don't really fit in like the Marvel Universe. This is some kind of like weird like French sci-fi film kind of alien. But I was like, yeah, whatever. It's a fine thing. And then, then she goes to meet her friend. Her friend. Because all women are friends. And again, let's just look at this disgusting example of what Marvel thinks a woman hero looks like. Again, square jaw, short hair. This is just, this is not what women look like. This is what 0.001% of women look like. And this is their flagship female character. Again, it's hugging. God, this is terrible. And then there's a little scene where... 
Apparently there's some shenanigans in the refugee camp, which looks to be on Earth now. Um, and then, this is what I'm talking about, where SJWs need a GTFO of comics. Uh, because they're just terrible. They don't, they don't take their own s story seriously. There's no weight to it. So now there's another, uh, there's another dream sequence where she's like, Tony, is that you? And then, oh my gosh, in her dream, uh, so she's, she's looking terrified, right? And the other one's looking evil. But then the dialogue is sitcom. She goes, not the Jedi in the Dagobah cave thing. And she goes, yes, the Jedi in the Dagobah cave thing. Um, and then that's, that's, that's the zero in jail. Okay. So, yeah, this book was... <sighs> Can a sigh be an actual, like, review? This book is then asterisk size asterisk. That's all I can say. It's a book farmed out to an SJW who has no interest in comics, who veered between, I was going to say from sitcom to something else. It was literally just different types of sitcoms. It's like from like a Cheers style sitcom to like a 30 Rock style sitcom to like an office. It's just... The tone is various levels of sitcom and OMG, like I'm totally seeing a psychiatrist. Um, you can't really think of anything good in it. Uh, it was awful, <laughs> absolutely awful. And this is this is the flagship. This is the franchise. Funny thing is, I've actually heard this Monsters Unleashed was another one of those events that Marvel started and then didn't even promote and then seemed to get tired of before it even started. But uh, I've read one, and it was really good, and I've actually had a lot of requests. It seems like they were putting some kind of, like, tryout people. Like, Jim Zub's done a little bit, but Joshua Corin, I don't know anything about him. So, if you guys got any Mo Monsters Unleashed comics you want me to do a video on, uh, let me know about them. Anyway, <laughs> I want this to be, like, an artifact in the, in the Marvel Universe. A magical box that can hold anything and change uh, shapes. It's kind of like something out of Doctor Who. Anyway... Thanks for watching. Um, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Check out the Patreon. I'm going to be working on some stuff right after I do this. If you have ever seen Breast Pecs in the Wild, uh, no, no, not Breast Pecs. This is a Breast Peck. It's one unit. Please tell me about it. For science. Or no, wait, for the science. Thanks for watching. Bye.